Welcome to another edition of Field Vision by War Room Sports in conjunction with Sports Kings. I'm one of your hosts, Devin McMillan, and I'm at the round table today with uh, Justin, Sports Kings. Just Flynn, baby. Jimmy, War Room Sports. Rest in peace to Bobo Brazil. Jim of Sports Kings. And B. Austin, War Room Sports. Free Roscoe P. Cold Chain, and shout out to your mom and them. <laughs> All right, so today's episode is basically going to be about quarterbacks. There's been some trades, there, there's been some signings, and we're basically going to break down each and every one of them, or at least the ones that we find to be important. Uh, the first one, guys, happened late last week, so let's talk a little bit about Tony Romo's new deal with the Cowboys. He got a six-year extension. $108 million, $55 million guaranteed. Damn! Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, I'll start with you. I mean, what do you think about this deal? Do you think Romo's been overpaid? Uh, well, here's the thing. Um, it depends upon how you look at it because you can say that all quarterbacks are overpaid, but what you're worth and what the market dictates are two different things. So – um, not that he had them in a position where they had to pay him, had to pay him that much, but that's what his market value is. Whether people want to admit it or not, his market value is what he got. Um, I think that Tony Romo uh, is is one of the better quarterbacks. I wouldn't put him in a, a top five, possibly top ten or top fifteen. But at the end of the day, there's not that many great quarterbacks in the league. Um, I hate defending a guy because every time I try to defend him, he makes the mistake. You know, at that moment when the team needs him not to make a mistake. But with that being said, it's not about what he's worth. It's about uh, what his value is in the market. So he got what his value was. So I'm not shocked by it. Um, do I think he's overpaid? I think most quarterbacks are overpaid. But, again, it's the market. Right. Uh, but, Justin, okay, you know, Jimmy, you know, told us about what the market dictates. What do you think of the $55 million signing bonus? You know, is, is that me, the part of the deal that that's hard to fathom? Um, yes and no. Yes, because it's Tony Romo. I mean, he's got fifty-five million dollars now per playoff win. Um, you pull up that <laughs> one playoff win he has. I know we're going to talk about McNabb a little later, but look at what the Cowboys have this year in their cap situation. They got the penalty from the NFL along with the Redskins, so they needed. I mean, they couldn't sign a, a veteran minimum deal for six months they couldn't they couldn't sign a practice squad guy with the cap space they had so um you got to pretty much give it to him all up front so that cap hit is a little lesser later on in the years right. um yeah i hate to see tony romo with 50 my 55 million guaranteed i mean he, he's a good quarterback in the in the uh, regular season but postseason he's not a joe flacco i mean he put joe flacco's guaranteed money to shame so a uh, little bittersweet i guess maybe that's not even the word but to me it's a yes and a no so yeah, that's a pretty good point because uh, his deal did free up some cap space. It was kind of like the Tom Brady deal. Jim, what do you think about the, the Romo deal? Uh, I'm a little bit perplexed by it, but I think it was more of a uh, a situation like we had in Baltimore with Flacco where the Cowboys really didn't have another option right away, and they're trying to make the playoffs, and they're trying to you know do big things this year, so you had to keep Romo around, and you had to pay him that. But at the same time, like uh, Donovan McNabb said, you're paying 55 mil to a guy that – you know, can't perform in the clutch and only has one playoff win. He's not really a proven winner. He's a proven stat guy, and I think they overpaid for just a guy who can take it eight and eight, nine and seven, but he can't get the job done overall. So I think that was a bit, a bit much for for Romo. All right. Well, since you brought up the McNabb tweet, you know, I, I have the quote here. It says Tony Romo, six years, fifty-five million dollar extension. First of all, McNabb got the numbers wrong. Uh, then he said, "Wow, really? With one playoff win, you got to be kidding me." B. Austin, what do you think about the contract briefly, but what do you think about McNabb's comments to Tony Romo? Way to throw that alley-oop up right at the rim. I appreciate it. Um, let me just say that when you're 33 years old and they escort you out of the league in the middle of your prime, you need not talk about other people's money. Shame on you. Um, I think that – I think that – First of all, I'm not really a Tony Homo detractor. Um, you know, I kind of clown the guy, but when you look at what's out there and you look at numbers, what his production is, 
and then you look at the Dallas landscape, if you will, um, you know, it's tough to follow four geniuses on this show because y'all already touched on all the main points. I, he, you had to pay him that. You had to. What, what else are you going to do? There's no other options for you. Yeah, now, as, I, far as, as far as Donovan is concerned, I think Donovan is a piece of excrement. Um, I always have. Um, I'm not objective when it comes to Donovan McNabb, and I apologize to our listeners, audience, and fan for that, but he gets me a little hot under the collar being a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Um, so I I noticed that he's very bitter, and he's very hateful, um, and he's bitter and hateful because he doesn't have a job, and I'm bitter and hateful because I had to watch him throw passes into the ground and interceptions at the most inopportune time for years. So I really believe he has no room to talk, and he just needs to focus on getting with God and going gracefully into the sunset. I think the I think the most ironic part about Donovan McNabb's tweet is the fact that he pointed out Tony Romo had one playoff win. That playoff win came against Donovan McNabb exactly. the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. So you probably don't want to mention that, you know, in the in the biggest scheme of things, statistically, Tony Romo is a a far superior quarterback to Donovan McNabb. But we all know the success that he had in Philly with a great team. I don't think you need the qualifier him. of statistically, uh, Devin. I just think. <laughs> all right. You know, I mean, he actually, well, he actually throws it, the ball down the field as opposed to in the ground or little dump offs that Westbrook takes ninety yards and gets credit for it. But yeah, you ain't no, hear me say that, though. It is what it is. I'm pretty sure we're going to get slandered in the, in the comment oh, section every care. time we talk about Donovan, that happens. So let's let's no, move one, on, though. Let's, let's talk about thing, uh, oh, Justin. Right, right, if, if I could add to that, um, mm -hmm. Ian Rappaport actually grazed the contract and found that the clause in there uh, that he could not be franchise tagged. So it was either pay him now or watch him leave next year. Watch him leave, right. And I think a lot of the quarterback moves that we've seen over the past week or so shows you – just what teams think about the draft crop that's coming out this this year. Great point. Um, so everybody's making a move to get somebody at least as a you know long term or stopgap. But let's go to some moves made by uh, Justin's team, the Raiders. Uh, Matt Flynn has been traded to Oakland for uh, 2014 fifth rounder and a conditional pick in 2015. Um, Justin started the show with a with a Matt, with a Flynn reference, so just just Flynn, baby. <laughs> yeah, you, you can you can start us off. Are you, you're you're happy about this move? I am happy. Um, as we talked last week, and if you guys know me, follow me on Twitter. I'm a big Carson Palmer critic. Um, he's given up on two teams in three years. He's playing. He's going to play for his third team in four years. He's going to a worse situation, in my opinion, in Arizona. Yeah, they got a good receiver, they got a decent defense, but they don't have an offensive line. You had three quarterbacks knocked out last year from the Arizona Cardinals behind their offensive line. Uh, could get a little better there, uh, but as far as Flynn goes, yeah, he's raw, he's unproven. Um, but what I've seen from him, what I've seen him do, uh, we're not paying him a ton of money. We're not paying him $13 million. I know the Raiders are going to suck this year. Uh, give him a chance, see what he has. I'm pumped for it. A lot of people that I've seen – are not quite as excited as I am, but, man, I'm thrilled to get rid of Carson Palmer. So I guess the thrill is more in the just the fact that it's change, you know, because we really don't know uh, what Flynn could do. But sure like we said, do. It, it's we saw that a, one game. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not an it's not an expensive pickup. And, yeah, I, mean, I understand what you're saying. Um, Jim, what do you think about this pickup? Uh, I think it's good for both teams. I mean, you look at Palmer, and he was being a baby. He goes to a new team that he's going to quit on after next season. Yo. B. Austin, what do you think? Yo. But, uh, you look at Matt Flynn. Oh, I don't think he can get any worse than Palmer. He, he'll probably do just as good, maybe even better. And uh, and you look at Palmer, I mean, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is there with that line, like Justin mentioned. So it, it doesn't matter, really, about him going to Arizona if – uh, he doesn't have time to throw the ball, but I think with Larry Fitzgerald and Rashard Mendenhall there now, uh, they have a chance to do something down there, but they have to get that offensive line fixed, or it won't matter if it's Palmer or a third stringer. Yeah, I think the Cardinals finally got you know, a half-decent quarterback, but they, they kind of waited until the division got extra tough. So you know, now they have to deal with, with an improved Seattle team. They have to deal with uh, 
a 49ers team coming off of a Super Bowl appearance. So it's going to be pretty tough for the Cardinals, but I do think Palmer is the best quarterback they've had down there since Kurt Warner. Jimmy, what do you think? I know you don't really. Well, I am not a Carson Palmer fan. I find him to be a quitter. Um, And just like the guys mentioned, he'll probably quit on the Cardinals as well after he gets hit a couple times behind that offensive line. In terms of Matt Flynn, you know, I I, I hate the Raiders, but I salute Matt salute Matt Flynn because – he had his uh, mom spaghetti moment, his eight mile moment for the, in that one game, and you know he, he he only had one shot and he took it and he made the best of it. Now he made a, a bunch of money going to Seattle, and now he's another job uh, with the Ray, all based on one game. Like that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my man took one game. Listen, man, he had his mom spaghetti I love moment, him. man. Listen, I love him. only in America, man. So. Salute to Matt Flynn, man. I think it's a great move for the Raiders. Anytime you can drop Carson Palmer off your roster, it's a good move. So, I, you know, they could they could have replaced him with Jim, and I would have said it was a good move. But, uh, you know, they, they, got, they got rid of Palmer. So, you know, shout out to uh, Matt Flynn, though, for taking advantage of his opportunity. B, also, what are your thoughts on the, you know, because there is a sort of an excitement, you know, around Matt Flynn joining the Raiders. As Justin said, some people may not be as excited but my question is this, you know, he went to Seattle and was supposed to, you know, make his debut as And couldn't you take know, Russell Russell Wilson's yeah. job. No, it wasn't got, Russell Wilson's or, job. Or he got Russell got his, got job, his taken. job taken, right. Yeah. So what do you think? He has one game. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what to Actually, think. Actually two. That he, he almost beat he the Patriots. Two. Oh, he yeah. has two. The I'm second sorry. one was a hell of a game. That, well, yeah. hey, that's fifty percent more games under his belt. So, <laughs> yes, yes, man, he took he advantage had, of it, though. Austin, give him credit for I'm that. Not mad, I'm not mad at him. Listen, if someone's willing to pay me seven million dollars to do this show, I'm going to take the money. I'm not going <laughs> to argue with them as to whether I'm being overpaid. I mean, they decided to pay me seven million dollars. So, salute to Matt Flynn for personifying capitalism in America and taking Absolute. advantage of the free market economy that we have. Greed is good. What, greed is good. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> views are good. But now, <laughs> in terms of of what he can do as an NFL quarterback after two... Yo. Okay, did he... Yeah, Alright, yeah. so look, let's, let's, let's go on the... Uh, L- let, me, let me throw in a little... Yeah, yeah. Justin got to uh, after, go after Justin throws us in, we'll go to Carson Palmer. No, I, I'm going to Carson Palmer. Go ahead and oh. do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, you know, he's of ready course, to go after, to the body. After the after this deal was done, Carson Palmer was traded to Arizona uh, for the second of their two six rounders. Um, I believe Arizona is also getting Oakland's seventh round pick, which is the 219th pick. And they agreed with Palmer on a two-year, $16 million deal with $10 million guaranteed. Justin. All right. So uh, Mark D. of the Cards decided to point out that Carson Palmer is one of eight quarterbacks to throw for over 4,000 yards last year with more than 20 touchdowns. Um, I, I got interested in that today because, yeah, I know the numbers look good. I know that he was the king of the fourth quarter. So I'll throw out some numbers here. Threw for 4,819 or 4,018 yards last season. 2,806 of them came in the fourth quarter. That makes him a 1,200-yard passer in three quarter in the other three quarters. So 12-12 divided by 48. That's 25 yards a quarter in passing. <laughs> so the king of crunch time. Uh, I won't even say crunch time. Garbage time. 734 of those garbage yards came with less than two minutes in the game. Yeah, he threw 22 touchdowns. Eight of those came in the fourth quarter. Seven of the eight came with less than two minutes in the game. So tell me that you're getting a good quarterback. Uh, sorry, you're not. King of, king of garbage time. I like the king way you wrote that garbage down. garbage time. <laughs> is, would you say that the garbage he's king of is like Darius Hayward Bay or something like that? Or um, w- would you say it was the core in, in – uh, Raiderville that was garbage, or well, no, no, it was him that was garbage. Um, it's, it's he's, a quitter. he's a quitter, though. Well, it doesn't matter. He's a quitter anyway. Right, but 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 what was the garbage that he was like? I'm looking at his receivers, and I'm <laughs> like, 
Yeah, Come on, man. You don't want you don't want to make the receiver argument, man, because there are a lot you know, of quarterbacks who play with with without top flight receivers that are. are yeah, yeah, yo, 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 the, yo, Keyword, you said top flight, right? But these guys aren't off the ground. They're not flight at all. <laughs> no, but what? I, no, no. I said I said without top flight receivers. Right. And the, and the Cardinals right. will make the Cardinals will make it seem as though they got a top flight receiver by pointing out. His statistics, which Justin just rebutted and told you how ludicrous it is. That's See, the point he was making. And the other thing, you can bring it up about the team. 47 of his 459 attempts came with the when the Raiders were leading. So, I mean, 80, what, 88% of his, his throws came when the Raiders were behind. That's part of the quarterback's job. I mean, Jason Campbell, you guys know him well. You've seen him. You watched him in Washington. We talked about that last week. That dude made that team look like a football team. Carson Palmer did not. Tell him, Justin, tell him. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jimmy does not like Carson Palmer. <laughs> no, what did Carson no. Palmer do? No, no I, I know because I've always, I've always found him to be somewhat fraudulent. Um, but then again, most USC quarterbacks. So I've always found him to be somewhat fraudulent. And a lot of people swear by this guy. And, you know, he, just, he quits on his team. Listen, even if you're not a great quarterback, quitting on your team to me is like the ultimate no-no. Fraudulent. So, thank you, Jim. Tell fraudulent. him, Jim. Fraudulent. No. There you go. My, my word. I know Jim. Jim is over there getting his drink on. I see that. <laughs> Yo, I can't even use Lick with Lou anymore. We might have to switch that nickname. All right. So uh, that's that's the whole Carson Palmer thing. Let's let's talk a little bit since all no, of these no, no, Devin, and, Well, Devin, you didn't touch on Carson. No. I, I oh. mean, there's there's nothing left to say. I mean, I don't <laughs> think Carson Palmer is. As bad as these guys make him out to be, but it's nothing I can say to prove that, you know, he's he's great or anything like that. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, I do think he he has a in, tendency in the fourth to, quarter. To I think he has a tendency to be a little stubborn once he loses interest in where he is. So you know, I don't know if I'm gonna go as far as to use the word quitter, but that's the word of the day. So I, I guess that's what it is. But. He's a quitter. Uh, but go ahead, so next story. Next story. There's nothing much I can say to defend that guy. And when he quit, when he quits on um, the Cardinals, we're gonna revisit this. Um, he's gonna get disinterested very fast. Since a lot of quarterbacks are getting paid, you know, it kind of seems like Aaron Rodgers and his reps. You know, they are negotiating with Green Bay, but they're kind of sitting billion. back, seeing what everybody's getting. And there was some speculation that he would get paid somewhere in the. Twenty-four to twenty-five million dollars per season yes. uh, range, and the latest that we heard is that uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers were about two million dollars per year, you know, apart from each other. Jim, uh, what have you heard, and what do you think about Aaron Rodgers' impending contract? Uh, I haven't really heard any uh, numbers, but I do think that. Um, with Tony Romo's deal and Joe Flacco's deal, Aaron Rodgers can demand whatever he wants, and he's probably going to get it because he's actually deserving. So um, yeah. he'll probably get right around what, what Flacco and uh, Romo got. I don't know if it's going to be more, but he's one guy that can actually make a case that he deserves that money. You can't go wrong with it. I mean, people were against Flacco getting it and Romo, but like uh, Jimmy alluded to, it's the market. And in this market, Aaron Rodgers is one of the few elite guys that can actually say he deserves the money that he gets. So but I'm I'm looking I'm looking right around what Romo got, maybe a little bit less. If Romo's getting fifty five guaranteed, then Aaron Rodgers can probably make a case for sixty million dollars guaranteed. Yeah. Um, I, easily. I just I have a different I, opinion. I think oh great Austin, you got it. Um I would sign him to seven years uh forty million and give him hundred and forty million guaranteed <laughs> uh, based on where I, I see him. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you give Aaron Rodgers baseball numbers um, because he does a lot without a line and no running back, and they pass the ball on third and one from the five. I mean, they 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 rely on my man's brain power and his arm like none other than Peyton Manning as a Colt. Like, I, I think dude should – but real, real talk – um. I really think he's going to be in the $65 million guaranteed range. I really do. I think you're going to see him take a $10 million premium over Romo. Damn. I think that, uh, well, first off. Either that I, or the state, or the state of Wisconsin. It might be. Yeah. Different. 
Yeah, I, I think he's getting uh, part of the state of Wisconsin. He's getting ownership in Teldar paper. Um, and but again, Jeez, my thing God. is this though. Yeah, but my thing is this though. Um, and I know a lot of uh, Patriots fans are going to hate what I'm getting ready to say, but in my personal opinion, right now Aaron Rodgers is uh, the best quarterback in football. So I don't agree, but I think you can make a very strong case. Like I'm not. Mad. I think he's better than Brady right now. So who else are you comparing him to? I don't know. I have to give it some thought. I mean, off the top of the dome, I, I think he, he know, sounds good. We don't, as, we, don't, we don't have to get into a best quarterback debate because that can go in a, a whole hour. But, you know, all I'm saying is in my personal opinion, I think he's the best quarterback in football. And when you yeah. talk about the best quarterback in football, looking at these contracts such as a Romo or such as a Flacco, yo, yeah. he might get 60 to $65 million guaranteed, you know, unless they just yeah. give him, unless they give him $1 billion. I mean, other than that, <laughs> <laughs> he he has to get paid. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree, but that that's where I rank him in terms of the quarterback position at this point right now. I'm not saying no argument. He, he's he's come easily, right now. You know, he's easily five different spots ahead of Flacco and Romo. So yeah, yeah. As far as the money goes, Flacco's reign on the top for sure, like leprechauns. Yeah. Uh, Justin, what do you think? Where do you rank uh, Aaron Rodgers, and what do you think the numbers should iron out to be? I think he'll get 60-65, just as you guys were saying. I do think he's the best quarterback in football. I wouldn't put anybody ahead of him. Um, as B. Austin said, you look at his offensive line, I would dare to say the Packers have the, the worst offensive line in the league. We talked about the Cardinals, but the Packers gave up the most sacks last year. He they don't have a running good. game. Yeah, they, they don't have a running game. They don't have very good pass protection, and Rodgers is just out there throwing bullets. Based on so who me, he is based on who he is and what he does, he should be able to give his linemen a fair one every week, like <laughs> after the game, and beat them up. But then when you look at it, Justin, it's like they have no running game, but they don't have, like, an elite receiver either. But, yo, no, they, they, have, don't. And they have him and a, and a bunch of other guys. <laughs> they have him, and he makes it work, and that's what I'm saying. He To me... That's why I would consider him the best. You know, I know people I think make the arguments. closest thing they had to an elite receiver. He's being pushed out of Green Bay right now, <laughs> and that's uh, Jennings. So it's, you know, yeah. the, he he. We talked about quarterbacks making good, good, uh, good of their receivers. You guys probably never heard of Shaky Smithson. He's a kid that grew up out here in Utah. I uh, went to the University of Utah. I followed him, but um, in a preseason game, he played I think four or five snaps. That dude had like seventy yards. So Rogers makes the best of his people. Yeah. yeah. That's what a good quarterback yeah, does. Yeah, if you, I would venture to say with him, he's talented enough. If you've got hands and you can route, he'll get you the ball. You can run a route. If you can run a route precisely, he's going to get the ball there on time and on target. I mean, put it like this: if you put him with the Raiders team last year, they would have made the playoffs and made a run. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Put Aaron Rodgers on any team; they're going to make some type of run at the playoffs. Uh, Jim, you have anything else on Rodgers before we? Go to this last story. Uh, no, I just, you know, I think as a quarterback, he is ranked um, significantly above Joe Flacco and Tony Romo, so the contract's going to reflect that, whatever okay. it is. And, and my colleagues at the round table know that I've been an Aaron Rodgers uh, fan, Stanley. Stan, and supporter. Yeah. That'd be discount before, double checking on Sundays. Yeah, before it was even popular to be an Aaron Rodgers fan, I was. I was I was the cheerleader, so you know everybody already knows how I feel about Aaron Rodgers um, and Darko Milicic are Devin's two favorite athletes. There's <laughs> clients. Let's let's wrap up on this one, and this is another quarterback. Um, he's not in the class with the people we spoke about. He's not getting big money or anything. But I want to ask you guys about the Pat White situation. Wait, he's a quarterback. <laughs> now, while unemployed, we you know uh, Pat White. He joined the NFL concussions lawsuit, um, <laughs> alleging that he continues to suffer from permanent injuries such as severe headaches, uh, speech issues, memory loss, etc. Um, and this is all stemming from the one concussion that he suffered as a rookie in Miami. Um, he dropped that lawsuit yesterday, you know, when the, his talks with the Redskins started to ramp up, and it looked like signing with the team was imminent. What did? What do you guys think about this whole thing? Like, how do you, you know, I guess when you th thought you weren't going to have a job, you want to sue the league, and now you're going to drop the lawsuit and participate in this league that you that you that you were suing two days ago. I he's don't a really Richard, He's a Richard. He's a Richard head. I need you guys to make some sense of this for me. He's a Richard head. 
Um, <laughs> his 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 goal was to get on the free market economy capitalist bandwagon and turn a couple dollars because he saw that his football career was coming to a swift close uh, because his position designation when you look at him on the roster going back old school NCAA Penn State was athlete so <laughs> he really doesn't have a position in the NFL now with the resurgence of the read option uh, he's getting some looks he can be some cannon fodder in practice I think um, and so there's some value there there's some value there I don't know that he'll take the field because I don't know how smart he is. I don't know if he'll get well, he's not going to take the field. Even in Washington he would be yeah, a third string. He's going to be a practice, a practice um, dummy. All right. This is a question I have for you guys though. If, because there's no guarantee he's, in, he's even going to make the team. So if he doesn't make the team, do you guys think he picks this lawsuit back up? Absolutely. This is America. This is a litigious society and we know for a fact that as soon as soon as it's over with, he's going to jump right back on that suit. Now, I mean, I don't want to call him a Richard Head like my brother B. Austin did. Uh, that may be the case. I don't know his situation in terms of whether he suffered from that concussion. Because think about this. He had one concussion as a um, you know rookie. But he could have had a bunch of concussions going back to playing football in high school, college, or what have you. So I don't know whether he is suffering. And he may be suffering. It may not be because of that one concussion in the NFL, but he still may be suffering. Shout out to Lee Steinberg. But at the end of the day, it's about that paper. That's what it all boils down to. He's trying to get some paper to take care of his family, and I'm not going to knock him for that. Um, I'm going to laugh at him because it sounds very, very, you know, Richard, Richard Ryder-ish, but, you know, it sounds fishy, fishy. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm not going to knock him for it. You know, let's see, let's see what uh, comes out of the situation because he may get cut and see how fast it takes him to jump back on his suit. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if that is if that is the case, you know, I'm gonna knock him for it because if this game has done this to you, and and you truly have something wrong with your head and you have permanent headaches and memory loss, then at the first sniff of somebody wanting you to get back into this game, you jump at it. I understand it's yeah, a money it, thing. It right? diminishes. People it diminishes steal the value. From their it, does. it does. It diminishes the value of of the. Those that are really suffering. People so that's the other way. That's a great point, Dad. Yeah, because does, now, now it you're, you're makes a lot of crying people, wolf. Crying yeah, wolf. It, it makes a lot of people in that fourteen hundred person lawsuit look like they're just money hungry, and it may not be the case for everybody. People may actually be, you know, suffering Lock from that paper, man. You know, as a result of misinformation from the NFL. Um, Jim and Justin, uh, wrap this Pat White situation up for us. Well, for me, um, I'm strong on this type of thing. I've always said, show me the gun that was held to their head to make them play the game of football. They played, well, unless you're Ziggy Ansar, Jason Pierre Paul, you play Pee Wee football, you play middle school, you play high school, you play college, you play on practice, whatever, then you get to the NFL. Most people that play football do it for their life. They're not out there suing their high schools. They're not out there suing Pee Wee football leagues. They're not out there suing colleges. They're suing the NFL because it is a billion dollar business. How much money can I get? How much money can I get? That's all it's about. Pat White, he's a fraud. Everybody on those yeah, yeah. teams are fraud. I'm sorry, I feel so <laughs> well, I, I like Junior Seau. Of course, he's a legend. But if you're going to put Junior Seau on that list, I'm sorry. You're, you're a fraud. You're going after money. That's all you're after. You may be suffering. You should have saved your damn money when you were playing the game. All you're after. No one held a gun to nobody's head and made them sign, made them play. I mean, guys hold out because they don't like they're getting enough money. They sit out. They sit on their ass. They sit at home. They show up when they – they don't even have to. I mean, you, you could sit out. No one makes you play the game. That's my look at, take. Look at, Car look at what Carson Palmer did. Sit right on his couch. <laughs> yeah, hey, exactly. Hey, Jim. I mean, shout, shout out to Justin Goodell right there. I was like, Jim, had I known, I would have let you go first. I don't know how you're going to follow that up. <laughs> Jim, is, um, Jim, Jim is drunk right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You know, I, I think it's uh, – I think it's very contradictory <clears throat> for Pat White, like you guys already mentioned, that um, before he got a new chance in the NFL, he was all about his lawsuit. Then he drops the lawsuit to play a game that he was suing because it hurt him. It doesn't really make uh, that <laughs> much American. sense to me. I think, he, I think he's not going to go very far in this comeback attempt. Um, I think it was uh, B. Austin alluded to him. He 
it'd be a decoy in practice for some quarterbacks that run the read option. That's probably about it. Uh, but if I do recall, wasn't it my boy I Taylor that gave him that concussion? That's yeah, pretty big. Knocked hit. him, knocked him yeah. cold out. <laughs> yeah. just, just he I remember, I remember that, that. I was like, oh, oh. We didn't, we didn't mention the Steelers on the show. He had to, he had to get that <laughs> one in, right? All right, well, Jim, uh, <laughs> let everybody know before we get out of here, you know, how they can find all of the work from the Sports Kings. Uh, it's uh, sports-kings.com. We got four other websites right on the main page. Uh, we do podcasts. We have a lot of talented writers. Uh, we're really working our way up in this blogosphere, the sports blogging thing. Um, it's really, really uh, a packed industry, so I think we're making some pretty good headway in terms of talent. Um, we're a lot better than those bums over at Rant Sports, so uh, check us out. Damn! <laughs> Jim <Jim's> shots fired! <laughs> He's sending shots. Shots Jimmy. fired! <laughs> Yo, How do people get in touch with War Room Sports? WarRoomSports.com. You'll find links to everything we do. But make sure you subscribe to this video here. And not only this video, the entire channel. Subscribe so you can get not only Phil Vision, but everything we do. Look us up all online. If you can't find us online, just peek into your mom's bedroom and we might be there. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been another edition of Field Vision. Uh, We'll see you guys next week. You know our motto, don't accept mediocrity and be steadfast in the war against ignorance. See you chumps on top. Pat White, you're wrong. The wait is the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly guys diversified and educated.